Welcome to Gunpowder Fiction and Plot. That's Scott. I'm Mel. We talk about books, and this is going to be a wrap. So, this month I set a TBR. It was 10 books. Um, I gave Scott the same TBR as me. How did we go? Well, I read. 20 books for the month. How many of the books that I actually set on your TBR did you read? Eight. That's not bad. That's better than I did when you set my TBR. I know. I technically read more books off TBR than you did, but... Certainly because you read so many books. Freak. Yeah, 20. That's I, I don't know if I've done that before. Um, but I, I also read a higher percentage of books... Um, so I only read four books. Uh, I think that's pretty standard for when we get busy. In fact, I'm pretty proud of four. Four, four books, considering, um, uh, yeah, what, what happened where we live is, is we got announced another form of lockdown and uh, like we, we get busier with lockdown because we run a delivery business. Yeah. So uh, things go nuts and we have to like react and deal with that with labour. Which means that Scott gets to listen to more books while he delivers and I get to listen to less while I do work. Yeah. Or read less. Well, now read. Work. Well, yeah. I, I physically read less too, but I buy I audio to make up for <laughs> it, so... That's it. Um... So, the other thing that happened is Sam at Paper Not Books, there'll be a photo here of her. She stole our TBR. I was looking for it. That's terrible. That is, is like... That is, like, the worst joke ever. Anyway, she wanted to read the same books as us, which was really exciting. So, we're going to see... So... If we can figure out what she rated out. We're going to see if she agrees with us. I don't know. She, We've got her on Goodreads. I don't actually know what I know that said. she didn't necessarily read our whole TBR either. I can't remember what her... There were some books that she'd already read, etc., uh, etc. Et so... She... Yeah, she read... Um, she didn't read the two books that I didn't read. She boycotted the Margaret Atwood books because she'd already read them. Ah, fair enough. Um, so... Alright, so let's talk about the books that we both read on the TBR, and let's start with Octavia Butler Kindred. Oh my god! Have you read it? It's so good. It's pretty good. It's so good. I really, really enjoyed it. Um... It... The plot was thrilling, and I enjoyed that um, by sort of revealing, by starting at the end point. You know how when they start at the end point, often it takes, like, the drama out of it? I don't think it did. I think that by showing us that it w what was going to happen at the end, you knew what level of safety that the main character was going to maintain, and you knew where it was going to go wrong and come unhinged. Um... But the main character's own fear drove the tension in the book. And I thought that it was really interesting um, that it became more about her surviving. Her, her fear in that environment was so palpable. And that's empathy. Like, that's teaching people empathy with this book. It's just, I thought it was really good. I think there's a danger for uh, SFF books to be a bit lost in the world building and and to really go down that rabbit hole. Rabbit hole, and I think by showing or to get us, like, or, or to have like a really good concept and not. Well, I think I think that the idea is to that they overly explore the concept that the the technology, the magic system, whatever science fiction and 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 fantasy are basically the same, but you're yeah, changing yeah. it from magic to science but yeah but what she did is she was able to sort of like take some of that out of it by showing you the ending and allow you to sort of listen to the literary stuff that she was putting in there and focus on on what she was saying about slavery also she didn't get into like the science of how the time travel was happening it was 
she treated it like you would treat it if you were in that situation. Like, all you really need to know are, how do I make this safe for myself? How, when is it going to end? Um, you know, and you don't actually have to do huge investigations into the background of how things work in order to figure those things out for yourself in these sort of situations. I often think um, the authors get bogged down in, like, the protagonist investigating you know the the cause yeah, and trying to figure it and out trying to figure and it out and it become you know and that becomes the whole point of the book and and she did a little bit of that but not but not, not a, a great deal. just just a, you know enough to make it seem realistic i think <laughs> yeah um this book really reminded me because of the science in it it reminded me of the time traveler's wife yeah. Um, but it's it's essentially the time traveler's wife, but a book about slavery instead of a romance. I definitely think that there's romance in it, but um, well, yeah. There but is, as far but... as like reminding us what what was happening to people of color in America, black people of color in America, not so long ago, it it was a really like slap in your face this is what it used to be like and and to have a modern character confronted by that reality and 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 not not even modern for our modern like someone who we would yeah. consider to be in danger because of the color of their skin um you know compared to now not that it's safe now but do you, i felt like it really showed that progression and that timeline and the realities of racism as a danger. What I found very interesting about this book was it was written in the 1970s and well it's timeless like you know you know like you you just knew it was like you intellectually you knew it was written in the 1970s it felt like it could have been written this year and her, her control of language is, is just beautiful yeah it's this is this is this has to be a, a book that in 50 100 years time that people are still reading i i just and i i don't think i've seen a negative review on booktube from it and i i can't imagine why you would ever think badly of this book it has enough plot to satiate anybody it's got enough literary na- analysis to satiate anybody i am definitely this will be an insta buy she will be an insta buy for me based on this one book um she would have to absolutely torch kingdoms to undo the good that she's done as far as I'm concerned in this one book. I'm really interested to see what else she's written. Uh, what else did we read? Yeah, look, I just want to say one last thing. I gave this four stars when I read it and and it's like it stayed with me and I'm actually going to review it and change it to five stars. But I'm going to point out the inconsistency of my star rating. Sorry, and let's just check in with Sam and see Ooh, if she agrees say? with us. Sam actually wrote a very short review for this. Wowie, I'm lost for all other words. And she gave it four stars. Yeah. So I think she's agreed with us there. Um, I gave it four stars, but I am changing it right now in my Goodreads to five stars. And I don't do stars because they're bullshit. Um, but you probably would have given it five stars. But I would have given it 152 stars. That's have all more stars. than the 74 you gave to the watchmaker of Billy Street. Like, if, if if you force me to rank books, this is going <laughs> to come above the watchmaker of Billy Street, and I hate you. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that. Um, He's a horror show. I am a horror show. Anyway, we're not going to get bogged down in this because we're going to do a proper review of this any minute now. So, the next book we're talking about is... We're going to do... We did two buddy reads for the month. Yeah, which we're doing proper reviews on both of those. So, we'll try and keep it short and sweet. So, let's first of all talk about My Dark Vanessa, which we read with Ange with an E. Ange. Right, I'm just going to bring it up in my thing. Um, My Dark Vanessa, if you are unaware, should be just decorated with trigger warnings uh, for uh, sexual abuse, pedophilia, grooming, all sorts of fun stuff. Um, But it is a twin timeline narrative um, of a girl who had a relationship with her teacher and uh, her adult self as she goes back and reanalyzes that relationship and and the nature of it being consensual and the nature of the fact that she was a child and 
all of those things. Yeah, I thought this book was fantastic. Um, this is, I, I think anybody who watches us regularly knows that I love Hardy, and this is all the reasons I love Hardy are there in this novel, and there's more. I, mean, I just, uh, for me, it was so real and so delicate with the subject matter and it got into the hard stuff. It's it's so weird because it was so easy to physically read this. Like the words and the, was very well the writing was so good. And to, to the point where I was like, just I just said to you like, is this, am I really enjoying a young adult book? And you're like, what the hell are you talking about? There is no way this is a young adult book. And I'm like, but the writing, the writing. And... It was it was very easy to consume. But I, I think she had to make it like that because emotionally I found it very taxing to, to walk this narrative. I found it, um, it was just, it was so brutal. It went through things like, you know, how can I be a victim of sexual abuse if I enjoyed the sex? And, like, all of those sort of, like, really grim, and real issues that survivors go through. And it it was frank about them. And I think frank discussion of sexual abuse and particularly the abuse of children is the only way to move forward and make it less prevalent in our society. So I just think this is great. Uh, I loved she did a bit of comparative, she put some comparative scenes in for sexual encounters that women have that aren't considered um, rape in our society and pointed out that, look, there's some blurred lines here. Yeah, definitely. There was lots of discussion of power structures and, I mean, the realities of uh, consensual sex in in an unequal power dynamic which is true, like, is always going to be true in a heterosexual relationship when men, when we have a patriarchal society. Like, that's just fact. So. Yeah. Um, This was, this is a book to trigger discussion. We're going to do a review on it. So let's, uh, let's cut it up. Yeah. There. Um, I gave it five stars. You don't do stars, but you liked it It a lot. It was good. It was a really good book. Um, And Sam, who stole our TBR, she gave it four stars. TW? I don't know what that means. Trigger warning. Trigger warning. <clears throat> this is quite a long review she gave her. Trigger warning. This book will likely be triggering for those of you, for those who's experienced rape and molestation. Graphic sensual experiences are sandwiched between the book cover. So skip this book entirely or pace yourself. This is an easy book to consume because it feels authentic. If you want to know what's going on inside a victim's head, here you go. You may not want to... Uh, experience, but it illustrates gaslighting and the anti-victim mentality so well. This book opens with an author's note in which Russell mentions she has a lot of complex feelings about the book Lolita. Uh, I get this, I love Nabarco's writing, but yes, it is a disturbing experience. This book is much the same. Uh, Semi-related notes, I have a clear recall of Fiona Apple's music video Criminal, which I'd like, which I'd seen in full maybe twice in the late 90s, this book is kind of like watching that video. I've not seen Fiona. Apple. It does get referenced a lot in the book, and oh. I think that maybe before out we film our discussion, we should uh, we should watch that. We should watch that. So I guess Sam agrees with us. Ange uh, also rated it four stars, and I know she. Um, uh, I wouldn't say she enjoyed it, but she got a lot out of it. Yeah, we talked for a very long time about this book. Uh, yeah, we talked for a very long time because we enjoy talking. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but this book did trigger a lot of discussion. <laughs> we love Ant. Also, the book was good. Our other buddy, Reed, which we also, we just loved getting to know both of these people. Um, but Danny from Spinelli Speaks. Um, by the way, if you get a chance to do a buddy read with either Danny or Ant, take, the, take it up immediately. They're two incredible people and they added to the experience yeah, for so sure. much. And... We're pretty lucky in the sense that when we want a buddy read, we've got each other. Um, but expanding that little circle to include Danny and Ange this month was so rewarding. Um, and I was, if if you would like to buddy read with either of us or both of us, shoot us an Instagram message or a comment below or something. We would love to do that. We're into it. Maybe not. Um, to maybe we'll have to pace it a bit, but we, we yeah, definitely want to. We definitely want to meet 
more people like that because we, we just had such great experiences. Now, Danny is a sweary sailor, and you wouldn't know that from her channel. So. <laughs> Danny and I got into it, uh, and so did Scott. It was really... Uh, what did we read? <laughs> <laughs> we read The Picture of Dorian Gray, which all three of us were calling The Portrait of Dorian Gray. The until, whole way through. Until Dan looked at the cover and said, hang on a second. That's not When the did the book. name change? Um, and I think she pointed out that we maybe got it mixed up with Portrait of the Artist of a Young Man by James Joyce or something like that. I don't know. Um, no, because the, in the book, the picture is called The Portrait. It is referred to The Portrait as well. throughout the book. Anyway, this was another spectacular read. So good. So much in, like, such a tiny little novel. You would think that you would whip through it in an afternoon. And it's just, it's it's not going to take you an afternoon. There's too much in it. So many, um, just angles and dangles to discuss. It was very interesting. It's very interesting for me to see, um, what other people thought about this book I definitely think that um, I got much more out of it by reading alongside to, you guys to compare our two buddy reads My Dark Vanessa stimulated conversation but the conversation in My Dark Vanessa made good conversation but the conversation didn't actually make My Dark Vanessa good My Dark Vanessa made the conversation interesting the conversation, listening to what Danny and Nell got, improved my experience, and I'm sure that they can all yeah. say the same because we all saw different things. And there's just the bloody hell, the density of shit in this book to analyse. Yeah, is... there's so much symbolism and so much sort of hidden narrative and um, exploration of just issues and society, and it was really good. Um, and something that we just found out watching BookTube this morning is that, you know, we were talking about homosexuality being illegal and something you went to jail for, but we didn't realise that the law to, to send homosexuals to jail was only passed five years before this book was published. So it was still quite a topical... So, the criminalisation yeah. of sodomy was still quite a, a topical and, um, and current uh, issue for people like Oscar Wilde who was homosexual in the era. This was a reread for me. When I read it the first time, I rated it three stars. I, I basically said, I think that this may have been a good book, but I compared it to another book I read just before it, Candide by Voltaire, and I said, it's the same book, but not as good. It's not really the same book, but it's got the same wit uh, yeah, to okay. it. Um, and that's just uh i don't I, I i was wrong yes you were you often are i was wrong um so let's just compare what did sam say when she did this um oh my god so many people that i am friends with have read this book and have all rated it five stars um i rated it five stars danny rated it five stars Nell doesn't do book ratings but I said it was good also candy katie burner all rated it five stars no bernie rated burner rated it four stars and it doesn't look like Sam read this book. <gasps> Cheeky. She didn't really steal our TBR. Well, maybe she didn't get to it. Yeah. Ten books is a lot. It is. It is. Maybe my Goodreads is not showing up. Now, uh, that's all the books that we both read together. You also read Margaret Atwood's Surfacing, didn't you? I did. And... Um, I'm going to do a full review about it. I think it deserves one. Also, I'm doing the All the Atlas project, so uh, we'll end up with a review of All the Atlas, I hope, by the end of that. Um, Surfacing is her second novel, and I think that her voice is not as cemented at this point. It's definitely a novel that required me to do a lot more work than I'm used to having to do for Margaret Atwood. She very much usually presents her opinion or she she's very good at presenting it on a nice easy consumable plate um and there was a lot more work involved in this one but it did not suffer for it it was a good uh, thoroughly interesting quite creepy Reminded me of um, that little tiny one that we read, the yellow wallpaper. 
Oh yeah. In um in tone, it is about a woman who goes back to her isolated childhood home um, because she hears that her father has disappeared. And she goes back with her lover and another couple and they spend a, a week in this isolated environment and there it's very creepy and there's just allusions to violence and um, sexual power dynamics and things going on under the, like lots of undercurrents throughout the whole thing um, and meanwhile I feel like she's slowly going mad but not and so you've got an unreliable narrator who you don't know if they're an unreliable narrator and being margaret atwood i was also the whole time sort of waiting for it to become a little bit speculative and it didn't really so i will reread this one um and i think i'll probably re reread it fairly soon to it'll it'll hold more for me on the second reading i'm sure I mean, the next book's on our TBRs. You didn't read, but I did read. Um, we're going to do them now, right? Um, so the first one that I read for the month was Homegoing, I think. Oh, I started this, but I didn't quite finish it. You didn't finish it. No. Um, so this was good because I hadn't read anything from a Ghanaian, Ghanaian, a, a, a person from Ghana, whatever <laughs> the correct um, word is. Um, yeah, I hadn't read anything from, from Ghana before, so I, I read that. Um, so this is a book, it starts off with these two sisters, one marries a slave trader and one is a slave. Uh, and, and it goes on to talk about their children and their children's children and so on and so forth, and it's like a generational story. Um, and it took me a little bit to get into this book and it was really weird because this is essentially a collection of short stories, right? But they're kind of linked, right? Like, cause, cause you, you swap between these two families that get further and further apart as, as time goes on. And one of the families stays in Ghana and the other one of the families goes to America and, and you get to see all this interesting, different stuff, um, the different perspectives and how different their lives would be. And, and you're always wondering who's better off. Sorry, this is annoying me. Ooh. Is okay. that a bit better? Do yeah, me... that's fine. That was the problem. You're the problem. Um, so Sam read this one. She rated it four stars. She said, this is simply beautiful. I love the generational ties. The individual stories are heartbreaking, but also hope-filled. Um, that, all of that agrees with my experience so far, but I, I didn't finish it yet. So, so watch the spoilers. Well, I haven't spoiled anything, have I? Yeah. Yeah, and I'm not going to spoil anything. What I will say is... Early on in this book, I was thinking that this was probably only going to be a three-star book, but that as I got further through the book, I started to really, it started to come together and I started to really enjoy it. And I ended up rating it five stars. But I will say, remember how I said we're going to explore how hypocritical my star ratings is after we watched, we, we talked about Kindred? Yeah. Right. Well, I rated Kindred 4. I rated Home Going 5. I can categorically say that Kindred is the better book of those two. Yeah. It's all about whether you've had your cookies in the afternoon or not. <laughs> this is why I think star ratings are stupid. It's well, stupid. it is. It's... And, and I, I basically... I even thought at the time that Kindred was a really mean four stars and Home Going is a really generous five star. Right. But... I was happy with those ratings, and now I'm like, well, I don't know which one is wrong, but one of those ratings is wrong. Probably get a up kindred. So was the next book you read, was that How We Disappeared? Yeah, so... I'm looking forward to this one. I haven't started it. You haven't I'm started really it. I'm really keen on this one. I was really bummed I didn't get to it this month. Well, this was a good book, but... Uh, I, I'm, I mean, I loved Dorian Gray. I loved My Dark Vanessa. I loved Homegoing. There's another book that I quite enjoyed uh, that we haven't got to yet. 
Um, and then I, I read Mansfield Park for Jane Austen July, which I loved. And I loved this book. But in with all of that, it's forgettable. But it is a very good book. Um, and I don't feel like forgettable is the right word for this book. Like, I, I, that's a comparative thing which you hate, isn't no, it? I just really struggle with it because I don't think they're not, you're not comparing apples and apples. And I don't read a book to measure whether it is better or worse than another book that it's completely unrelated to. Like, it's just, it's a weird. It's a weird process to me, and I'm very uncomfortable with it. It makes me very uncomfortable. I will say, I think this is probably the darkest book I read this month. Including Dark Vanessa. Including Dark Vanessa, including Girl, Woman, Other, including Homegoing. Um, it depicts the Japanese invasion of Malaysia and Singapore and that area and what happened to some of the people there. Um, um, this is another multi-generational one, though, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's essentially you've got three narrators, um, and and it's a little bit confusing at first because there's no efforts made to explain that they're in completely different time stamps. And, uh, Things Scott loves. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Um, but it... it it, it it's fine. It's not. I mean, it, it it's just a little bit confusing first off, and, and I, I didn't actually have a problem with it at all, and and I figured it out. Um, yeah, it's just one of the stories. One of the stories is so brutal. It is flabbergasting. I. I believe that 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 will have happened, that it is an eyewitness story, and I just didn't think that that was a thing that could happen, and and I just yeah, um, potentially the one of the most brutal things I've ever read in a book. Um, so Sam read it at four stars. I'm beginning to think that she doesn't give out five stars. I I, I agree with Sam. Uh, yeah. She's rated everything so far four stars. So. <laughs> Um, whoa, this is a novel with novel capitalised. Uh, trigger warnings for rape, abuse and ostracism, which is interesting. I am still yes. really keen to read this book. I and and I think when I do we'll do a proper a proper big review. I wanna say I wanna say every now and then was it we we actually we met somebody when we were travelling who said that Adolf Hitler was basically the nastiest man who had ever worked, walked to the earth and that what the Germans did to the Jews was the worst thing ever. And and I I just think that read this book is, is what... I think we should send Roy that this book. Roy, Roy the book. Because what Hitler did to the Jews was horrible. But this is up there and it is is different in a weird way that I it's just I did not I, I think like in all things we hear the white stories much more than we hear the stories of the people of colour and and we hear the male stories more than the female stories and we hear the straight stories more than the gay stories yeah, all of those things and and I think um, that people commit atrocities against other people all the time in our history and it's important to learn about all of it, not just the European angle. Yes. Uh, this is also, there's quite sad, um, and look, it's weird, I, I've actually, I mean, I've said all this stuff that, in, you know, how powerful the experience is, but I've said that the book is not as good as the other books as well and I want to make that, but like this book is, it's a big punch in the face, and and that is interesting. But as far as a book goes, I think often scar literature is actually it's actually more concerned about telling the story than it is about making the story literature. And um, I think I've had a similar criticism of this style of book before. I wouldn't call this scar. 
Wouldn't literature. You? Ooh, interesting. I I'm not too familiar with what scar literature is, um, but what I this is this is just straight out a story that would have happened. Yeah. Okay. Right. So this it's is not this is historical fiction. Yeah. Okay. Um. Yeah. All right. Um. Half of a yellow sun. Half of a yellow sun. I am so confused about this book. It is. You gave it two stars. I did, and 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 spoil spoil what I was about to say. Sorry, I'm shocked. I it. it um, it is one of my favourite genres, historical fiction. It had a plot that I could get behind. It taught me stuff. It did all the things that a novel should do. Um, it it poked me in the brain. It made me think. I didn't know anything about Biafra before reading this book. I didn't know about the Biafran uh, rebellion, um, the, the the country of Biafra, and the the civil war, the Biafran civil war. That's the word I'm I'm thinking of. I knew nothing about that, and this is what this book is about, right? Um, and so it it educated me, and it talked about political corruption. It talked about all these things that I love hearing about. Yet it just didn't come together as a novel. It it was confusing. It lacked detail in the places that I wanted detail. It stayed too long in other places. It it was boring, and and it really shouldn't have been i feel like this is the perfect candidate for a book that would make a better movie um well sam didn't agree with you and i think most people i have seen with this book have like four or five started so i'm utterly shocked that you hated it i don't understand to be honest i i really i feel like i should have liked this book but i didn't so this is an honest review right Yeah, yeah yeah um i i didn't like it but I like my criticism of it is is a bit I, I I'm trying to actually criticize it to to justify my my rating but ultimately it did everything that I wanted it to do and I still didn't like it so that is that is what I'm saying well I can't yeah. wait to read that and see if you're wrong I suspect that you'll like me I said maybe it's just that I don't like um, I have not read any Chimamanda, Nagochi, Adichie before. Maybe I just don't gel with her writing style. Maybe it's as simple as that. Uh, Girl, Women, Other. This was a fantastic book. This is so similar to Homegoing in that it is essentially a collection of short stories that are linked. Um, and this style of experimental writing is really good, actually. Um I don't really like short stories very much, but the way that it all sort of comes together, I don't quite understand how they're doing it. But both It's a magic trick. It's a magic trick. No, it's good. It's it's I a, like it, it when they do a magic trick. They do something and I've not figured it out yet. You're like, it's, Ooh, that's fancy. Yeah, it's clever. Yeah. Um but yeah, both these authors, Bernadine Evaristo and Ya Gasai, have have done it very well. Um Again, this is I'm going to point out the hypocrisy. I rated this four stars. This is better than Homegoing, which I rated five stars. Um, but they're, I mean, honestly, I, I'll be really shocked if you like one and don't like the other. Sam has pulled out the bing, gun, bing guns and this is her first five stars. That's star. her five stars? Oh, yeah. well, yeah. I can see this. This is this is good. The, the characters in this are all flawed in different ways. It talks about the black experience in the UK and in the US and it's mainly in the UK but it, it does take place in other parts of the world. Um, it talks about being a Muslim, it talks about being transgendered, it talks about being gay, it talks about being a feminist, it talks about being in an abusive relationship, it talks about being in a gay abusive relationship, it talks about having a support network taken out and it can it talks about been an orphan. It talks about all these issues that are just issues that people face, but that nobody faces. I mean, maybe some poor, unfortunate soul does face them all, but it it because it's a selection of short stories, 
and the characters that you essentially you start with one character and then you go to that character's best friend then you go to that character's father then you go to that character's cousin and you go to that character's mother and you know everybody's sort of linked to to the next character and characters appear in other characters stories and stuff but essentially it is a bunch of short stories um and it's it's powerful I'm excited about um, that one too. I'm still excited about everything on this TBR. I'm, I just wish that I read faster. Yeah. I could have kept pace with you. That would have been nice. Um, is this... Oh, no, there's one more book on this TBR. One lucky last. Lucky last. And, and we have saved the worst for last. Yeah, just for you. <laughs> I mean, when you've won two Booker Prizes... You've got a lot to live up to with your back catalogue, so don't you? Sam gave this three and a half stars. So this is Hilary Mantel's A Place of Greater Safety. This is her novel about the French Revolution. Um, it centres Maximilian, Ro- Maximilian Robespierre as the protagonist, although uh, that's... There are other characters who could... That sounds so interesting. ...be the protagonist. I'm it still is, looking forward to reading this, even though it's epic and Scott has given it one one star. I, I would not have finished this book if it wasn't for our book club. Uh, I would have DNF'd it. I didn't DNF it so that I could talk about it in the book club. I was the only member of our book club to finish the book. this book. <laughs> and I feel a bit cheated. Like, if you're watching this and you're from my book club, like, uh, I mean, I could have DNF'd this book. Um, <laughs> I probably should have just said, screw the book club, I'm DNFing. Yeah, I think if you, I think that's a valid response. And I've said this before. I think if you're going to a book club and your response to a book was, I didn't finish it because X, Y, and Z, I think that's as valid as a part of the discussion as I did finish it. And, you know, I, I think that that's an important part of the conversation. Yeah. Um, Especially for an ongoing book club that pick, chooses books together. Yes. Look, Let's criticise this book quickly. Um, There were some very witty one-liners. I believe it is super accurate to history. Uh, There was no discussion of people in this book. This is a revolution. Where are the people? Like, um, the writing doesn't... I can't believe that this lady won a book. That is terrible writing. Um... It's hard to follow what's going on. I, I I couldn't feel the difference between the characters. I, like, there's glimpses of brilliance, but I feel like, look, every author must start off by writing something that they probably don't publish to, to figure out their skills. And I feel like Hilary Mantel is figuring out her skills here because... I've not read Wolf's Hall, but I guarantee you people who have read Wolf's Hall would be like, is this the same author? What are you talking about? Are you nuts? And they're probably calling me stupid right now. Um, but this was utterly atrocious, this book. Terrible writing. I think Scott can often be a bit of a drama queen. So I, I, do, I, I do like to bag. I, once I start, I'm, I'm hard to stop. I do look forward to reading it to see if I agree with him. Um, I also have a bit more background knowledge on the French Revolution, so hopefully that will help me. Well, I stopped and I watched a few TED Talks and YouTube videos and stuff to learn about the French Revolution so that I could follow this. That wasn't the problem. I, I knew... I knew enough. If you know about um, the the French and American involvement and how that plays into the French Revolution, that's about as in-depth as you need to know. Um, Sam gave it three and a half stars and said it was much better than she thought it was going to be. So she was obviously dreading it. <laughs> it's honestly, it's thick. Like if It's a, it's a huge book. That's what, the reason what that I, I didn't pick I wouldn't it up. say go buy this book. If, if you're a Mantell fan, go go to the library and be prepared to DNF it because I I'll, I would like to know. I would like to know if you, if you are a Mantell fan and you have read this book and you have read the Cromwell series um, that has, you know, won two Booker Prizes and potentially three. Um, I would like to know... Should I, should I, um... Try the other one. Yeah, is is this one just not her best work? I think that's it. I yeah. think that's enough from us. Uh, 
So there will be another rap video coming because Scott I, I've still got another talking. 10 books or something that we haven't reviewed, but this is long enough, isn't it? Yeah, I'm done listening to you. Uh, they're done listening to you. They are. I must be boring by now. Let's get out of here. Bye.